thanks for talking with me today. Uh, Sam Patterson, um, you're the operational lead support for the Open Bazaar team. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, great. Um, so can you start off by just uh, summarizing really quick like what Open Bazaar is trying to achieve with this project? Sure. <clears throat> so basically most online commerce today, essentially all of it, is done by using centralized services. Uh, so that means that you are actually going to a server uh, that a specific, usually that a specific company owns, um, and you're putting in a request to buy something either from the company directly or from an individual who uses that platform. So with eBay, uh, you're not buying it from eBay per se, uh, but you're buying it from another user. That user, of course, has to pay uh, fees for using PayPal and for using the eBay service. Uh, eBay itself has control over what can be listed, the terms and conditions. Um, and then, you know, not just the company itself, right? They censor the transactions uh, at the request of the government. Uh, they force you to use their platform and their currency. Uh, but this, all your data is being stored as well and potentially can be leaked and um, you know, or stolen, as has happened, of course, many times. And so our goal is basically saying, wait a minute, uh, you know, we have the Internet, which is decentralized communications. Uh, we have Bit BitTorrent, which is peer-to-peer -peer decentralized sharing of data. Now we have Bitcoin which is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer way to share value electronically, but we don't have peer-to-peer -peer, uh, commerce online yet. It just doesn't exist. So why don't we take the same technologies that are used for the Internet and Bitcoin and apply it to commerce online? And that's what Open Bazaar is. It's an attempt to create a decentralized marketplace online where everyone that participates in the marketplace is a node in this peer-to-peer -peer network, and your trade happens directly with that other person, no companies, no government in the middle. Yeah, um, that's amazing, really. Um, it's something that the internet sorely needs at this stage in history. Um, why do you think that this kind of thing hasn't been created before yet? Every other commerce site is basically <laughs> a centralized, uh, like, for-profit company that takes fees and, and, you know, decides what people can sell and what they can't sell. Why has it taken so long for the internet to produce and and for people to produce like this this kind of open platform? I think it's just just like the same with Bitcoin. Uh, all the pieces actually were out there before. No one had just put them together yet. Um, and I think and we're not the only person trying to do something similar. Of course, Open Bazaar is a fork of the dark market. Uh, which was a uh, actually a hackathon attempt by Amir Taki and the uh, Airbits group at the Toronto Hackathon back in April. And um, so they sort of were the first group to do it, but that was only 36 hours of, you know, of work. And there, you need a lot more than that, right? So we, yeah. we uh, uh, Brian Hoffman is actually the lead developer on our project. He forked the code and continued development. Uh, so someone had already put a little thought into it. Um, and also groups like, like Open Transactions uh, using Ricardian contracts. You know, they put some thought into how this type of thing can be done too. But it's just a case where someone hadn't quite um, tried to put the pieces together yet. So Yeah, you guys are kind of like bringing all of these different <laughs> tools that have been innovated in, in, the, in recent times and kind of combining it all into this like nice little neat combination in, into a, a decentralized market. Yeah, that's the goal, and and there are a lot of different, and we're not really doing much new. I mean, in terms of like actual new stuff being created by Open Bazaar, the only thing that I'm aware of right now that's really sort of fundamentally new is that um, uh, Dionysus Zindros, who's a, a Greek um, <clears throat> computer science student, is creating a reputation network for a distributed pseudonymous system. And as as far as I know, that does not that doesn't exist anywhere yet. Uh, so that's being built right now. But apart from that, pretty much everything else is, uh, you know, we use Bit we use multisig, uh, we use PGP, we're using a Kademlia uh, distributed hash table network. Um, 
you know, so Ricardian contracts, you know, all the stuff is, has already been hashed out. We're just trying to put the, put it all together. So um, I'm curious, like, what are some of the greatest challenges that the team has, has experienced thus far trying to get this project off the ground? So I can break that into, like, technical challenges and then just sort of operational challenges. And I'll start with the operational side because I don't do the code myself. I'm not a developer. Um, I know enough to open issues on GitHub and fix typos, but <laughs> that's about the extent of my knowledge. Um, Operationally speaking, this is just, it's a huge project. Uh, we're talking about, like I just mentioned, bringing all these pieces together, getting them all running together, uh, and then launching. And that's, it's just a, a big challenge. So basically, Brian Hoffman, as I mentioned, is the lead developer. He forked the project originally back in April. Um, and then I joined uh, pretty shortly thereafter. Um, actually, I, interesting story on how I joined. Um, I, I'm a writer. Uh, I wrote one of the first guides on how to use Bitcoin uh, about a year and a half ago. Nice. And I have I was approached to do a second book by a book publisher. And I, I don't really re like like relying on intellectual property to, you know, to get or my money. So I was thinking, what's the next book that I can write that's going to have community support that I can maybe crowdfund? We'll see. Um, and the idea of dark market was really interesting. I think had a lot of community support behind it. And so when someone was actually forked it, uh, Brian forked it, I thought, you know what, I need to interview this guy so that later on, at the beginning, I was there and I have the notes and I can write a, you know, a legitimate book about it. This, the interview it went over an hour. It was so compelling, right? The, the idea was so compelling that I said, forget, forget that. I'm just going to dive right in and try to help, help, help this guy make it happen. Wow, um, nice. So, yeah, so that's where it started, and it's just it's snowballed ever since. But anyway, for Brian uh, and I and uh, another one of the main team, uh, Dr. Washington Sanchez from Australia, it's pretty much been like second jobs for us. Uh, I mean, this has been, you know, we all have day jobs. This is not what we do for a living. We're not making money off of this. Um, so it's sort of come home and, and work on Open Bazaar. Uh, and we all have families, by the way, with children as well. So I think operationally speaking, the time – is just the biggest hurdle for us. And mm -hmm. we have a decent amount of people who are starting to come on board now um, from all over the world. I mentioned Dionysus um, from Greece and uh, Dr. Washington Sanchez uh, from Australia and um, quite a few others who are, who are helping us on the project. So development support is probably the, the biggest hurdle because we need a lot of eyes on this to make sure that it's done correctly. Uh, I think moving forward, it's going to be the same. We need to have a lot of people from the community, from all different aspects of the Bitcoin community and outside the Bitcoin community even, to come in and tell us what works and what doesn't work and why they can't get it installed and all that stuff, which we're about to find out because we're about to start the beta um, and, and really get feedback. So that's sort of the operational difficulties. Um, you know, there's maybe potential legal difficulties too. We haven't gotten that far yet. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're just... We're building code, right? And we don't hold the private keys for the transaction. We're not touching the Bitcoin. We're not creating the listings. So, you know, we think that we're we're safe, um, but the government doesn't always understand the nuance of this kind of stuff. So, if people start to use the network in ways that um, they don't agree with, are they going to look to us to do something about it? Right? We don't know the answer to that yet. Maybe being some sort of a 501c3 will help with that. We're looking into these different ideas. Hmm. Um, but in terms of technical challenges, uh, Brian would be better at answering that than I would. But, you know, I think uh, multi-sig, even though it's hugely valuable, isn't that easy to use yet. Uh, that's, yeah. that's at least one thing that I found. Um, so that's been a big one. Um, PGP actually is a little fickle. If you don't s get the signing just perfectly, um, you have all kinds of problems with it. I know that's something we dealt with for a while. Um, you know, this sort of decentralized marketplace, you know, we, we have data that's being shared in a decentralized fashion um, like BitTorrent. But specifically sharing like um, a Ricardian contract, which has all the information on a product listing, and um, images along with it and other data along with it just hasn't we're just testing out how that's going to work right we don't you know it hasn't been done yet so we're finding that sometimes the there's a lot of late, more latency on the network than we like um, it can be a little slow 
So figuring out how to optimize is something that once we start having a lot of people on the network, it's going to be a really big challenge, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, <laughs> probably the biggest technical challenge is we don't even know yet because you know, we have, at most, we have maybe a dozen people on the network at a time because you can't use it yet to go from beginning to end, right? Or it's only just for testing. Um, and having a dozen and having 1,200, 12,000, it's going to be a totally different ballgame. Yeah. So, I mean, that brings me to, to something else I'm curious about. Um, how big is the beta going to be when you guys release it in beta? Like how many people are going to have access to that platform and be able to test it out and actually start doing transactions? It's an open beta. So um, as many people as as want to, basically. Uh, our goal is to create an, a simple installer, uh, both for Linux and Windows. Um, I don't think initially, when we first start the beta at the end of the month, there's going to be a, a, a Mac installer yet. But um, the the probably the biggest barrier to having you know being flooded with nodes is just the technical knowledge that's needed to to join the beta. Um, it's not going to be huge, and we're working our our hardest to make sure it's very low because we want as many people as possible. But um, there are things like you know port forwarding. Um, you know there there are things like you know getting the installer running correctly that may need a little more technical expertise than, than other things. Um, now, I do have a, a support forum, um, which is specifically for getting a node running, for submitting bug requests, and for submitting suggestions for improvement. Um, and, of course, we have the IRC room. So we're hoping people are going to come and we'll help them walk through it. But there's a natural limit to how many people initially will join just because it's not you know one-click easy yet. Now, yeah. our goal at the end is for it to be one click easy. I mean, we really want this to be as simple as using eBay or uh, Amazon or Craigslist. But um, you know, it's going to be not, exciting. Not there yet. Oh yeah, it's uh, just thinking through how this is going to be used uh, is. I mean, keeps me awake at night in a good way, right? I'm just so excited for the potential for people to really exercise their own ends and uh, engage in trade in a way that just hasn't been seen yet. Yeah, I mean, it could really usher in like a new age in e-commerce. Basically, this is this has never really been tried before on a mass scale with a program you know that's streamlined and and easy to use and you know has escrow built in and reputation system built in, you know, built into the code, not not parameters right. set up by the overall company. So it's it's very great. It's exciting. So yeah. um, I I want to ask you about like a couple of features specifically and and how like you know how whether it's difficult to implement that or whether you know it's relatively easy um like using multi-sig you mentioned multi-sig um is that basically used as the escrow function in open bazaar yeah so people you have to be we have to be careful the way we talk about it because people mean different things when they say um escrow um the way that it works in open bazaar is when you when the uh, the buyer sees a seller's contract. So I guess I'll start from the seller because that's the first point. Uh, the seller has a product or a service that they want to put out in the network. So they fill in their product details into uh, into the, the GUI. Uh, it just it fills it in. It creates this Ricardian contract. Once they hit submit, their signature digitally signs it and then pushes it out to the network. Okay. Now, a buyer goes onto the network, they search using the keyword terms that the person had in their contract. They search, they find that contract, they open it up. If they agree with the terms, they agree with the price, then what they do is they basically signal to uh, the buyer and to a notary that they want to purchase the contract. So once that happens, the contract is going to go to the notary. uh, And the function of the notary is basically to uh, be another signature so they basically verify that both parties have signed this contract and then to create the multi-sig. So once they sign it, uh, well actually, once they create a multi-sig, they then sign it, which has the multi-sig in there and all signatures of all parties. They broadcast that to the buyer and the seller. So everyone now has a contract that's signed by everyone and has the multi-sig. The buyer then funds that multi-sig transaction. Okay, when the multi-sig transactions is funded, that's when the seller will see it and their client. They will ship the product or 
or deliver the service. However, you know, they fill the terms of the contract basically. Once that's done, the buyer then marks that it's been completed. They sh- the product was shipped or the product was received, the contract was fulfilled, and that signs um, the transaction itself. So the seller signed it when they marked that they shipped the product. So that's one of three okay. in the multi-sig. The buyer signed it when they received it. That's two of three that the funds go through. Now, the reason that we have the notaries or the arbiters, and those are those are distinct um, for a reason. But yeah, I, I want to get into that yeah, as, as well. I'll, yeah. I'll dive into that in a second. But the reason we have that, of course, is because not everything always goes perfectly and the product maybe didn't make it or it's a crap product or they got scammed or whatever. Um, so basically, the, the buyer... Uh, would flag the notary and say something's wrong, okay? And at that point, then uh, it would be open for a dispute, and then the dispute would go to the arbiter, uh, which is another party, who basically makes the determination how this is going to turn out. Um, now, the reason that um, notaries and arbiters uh, have an incentive to do this, because it does take... It doesn't take a lot of effort to do the uh, the notarization or the creation of multisig, but putting eyeballs on dispute resolution, of course, takes time. Um, is because in the original contract, there when they when they uh, agreed to the notary or they agreed to the arbiter, they also agreed to the terms that the arbiter or notary used in case a dispute occurred. And mm. you know, most it's that that's something that sort of happens in the background. You know, when I talk about these recording contracts, there's a lot of stuff in them. But the user isn't going to see most of that, right? This is this is uh, you know this is just clicking a button for most of it. Um, of course, you can get into the details if you want to, but most people are not going to want to. Um, so it goes for a dispute resolution to the arbiter. They handle down sort of the verdict, and and the goal of the arbiters is basically to create a polycentric legal system where we're not relying on the existing existing. Uh, courts and judicial system, uh, we're actually creating basically our own, you know, internet law. Yeah. Um, and then the notary carries out the, the sort of the, the verdict, if you will, uh, and they release. They have the the third. I'm sorry. They have the second signature uh, that won the whatever party won the the case. They have the second signature for that. Yeah. Okay. So. Um... Does the arbiter talk directly to the seller and buyer and like, do they try and judge, you know, who's right and who's wrong based, based off of like messages or if, or if the, or if the buyer like sends a picture of like the, the bad product or something like how does the communication work between them? So the most honest answer is we don't know yet. Um, because we haven't seen it. Um, that's going to be a market process. My guess is, since we have a reputation system, um, what's going to happen is the arbiters that have the the most objective uh, system, the one that both parties going in feel the most comfortable with, whatever terms they set up first, those are the people that are going to get the best reputation, and that's what's going to happen. Huh. So I don't know what people are going to adopt, what the market's sort of going to adopt and reward through reputation. My guess is it's something like what you're talking about, uh, which is you know, look, I need to have a, a ship, a tracking number on the package. Um, you know, you need to submit this sort of photo evidence of whatever, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. But of course, uh, messaging is something that will be built into the client. Right now, uh, the messaging for contracts goes from uh, node to node in our own sort of protocol, uh, very similar to how BitTorrent works. But you can do private messaging apart from just the contracts, which is uh, we have BitMessage incorporated into the client. So if you have BitMessage running, you just put your address into the client, and it will pull messages in and push messages out right from your client, so you don't have to even open BitMessage. Wow, very nice, very nice. Yeah. Um, so is, I, I just want to clarify, like, is all this code basic, or most of it at least, like, basically? Just um, interfacing with the blockchain directly. I know the multi-sig is interfacing with the blockchain, but is is this yeah. overall like a blockchain like project? No, most of it's not. Um, so multi-sig, obviously, of course, must be uh, in the blockchain. Um, so 
part of the reputation system that we're building is going to use proof of burn, uh, optional proof of burn, oh. for sellers to basically prove that they're invested in their uh, in their reputation. Uh, if it costs you money to create a reputation, then of course it's it's harder for them to scam someone because they lose you know the benefit of doing that. Yes. So setting up a proof of burn uh, obviously is going to need to do the the blockchain. Um, we're thinking about tying uh, possibly like when a contract is completed, maybe creating a hash and putting that in the blockchain so we can point back to it. But apart from that, no um, contracts are in a distributed hash table network peer-to-peer -peer directly with each other, and they're not stored in a, a blockchain system. Okay, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the reputation and rating system, um, as far as, as my knowledge, no, one, no one's ever um, implemented like a rating system and reputation decentrally. Uh, right. So <laughs> is, is that really difficult to do and also prevent you know, spam and hackers from gaming the system? Uh, you mentioned proof of burn to to make it expensive for people to create these accounts. Basically, um, yeah. are, are there any other challenges with creating like a decentralized reputation system? Yeah, I mean, there's there's huge challenges doing that. Um, there's, I mean, there's a good reason no one's done it. Um, so I'm just gonna have to punt on this question, and I'll answer it by by doing this. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dionysus Zendros um, wrote a paper on this. Actually, he's writing it for his master's thesis, writing and coding it for his master's thesis wow, um, nice. at a university out in Greece. It is very technically involved and absolutely fascinating to read. And I won't pretend to understand all of it. I, I, I don't. <laughs> but the guy is doing really great work. Um, now, that's not going to be ready for the beta release. Uh, we're going to have a very... Uh, I don't know about very simple, but a, a more simplified version of a um, reputation system for the the beta release, just to prevent obvious gaming and scams and that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but for the full release by the end of the year, you know, we're we're gonna have that included. Um, and I encourage everyone who's interested in the subject to go to our GitHub page, and in the there's a section called Theory Work. The tenth link in there uh, is a it's called a, a pseudonymous uh, and distributed reputation system. Go to that. It's a gist. Go to that gist. Open it up. Read through it. Like I said, it's it is somewhat technically complicated, but uh, it's pretty fascinating the way that that uh, that this is we're, we're attempting to set this up. Yeah. Um. Honestly, like looking at the big picture here, like you guys are really combining like a lot of different uh tools and methods for for basically you know transacting between people across the internet and just all combining it into this this one you know convenient program basically that no one really controls and and you know it's it's a new invention basically but i mean that's the goal and um uh, you know we're uh really excited to see what comes out of it right i mean you know, we're not on the same level as Satoshi or, or anything, but you know, yeah. I wonder when when Satoshi started. You know, if he how if he sort of tried to even in his mind tried to game out how people would be using this, yeah, and how yeah. close to accurate would he have been? That's how I feel with this. Is you know, I I really I don't know how this is going to be used, but I have the general belief that people being able to pursue their own ends with as little interference as possible from third parties is necessarily a good thing for them. So I know it's going to be good for people, good for society as a whole. I don't know how specifically it's going to be good, and that's what we're excited to uh, to find out. Yeah, it's going to be really fascinating, fascinating when it releases and to see how people use this and to see how it potentially changes the world. Um, one other thing that I wanted wanted to touch on is that you know, it doesn't have to be only for buying and selling goods, but it's also services where you don't necessarily have to ship anything, right? You can yes. pay someone in a transaction to do a service for you, uh, you know, like graphic design or programming or something like that. And when they do it, then, you know, you release the transaction and it's all good. It's not just goods and services. It's it's amazing. No, no. So 
you know, the Ricardian contract, which is what this is all based on, is very flexible. I mean, all, all it essentially is is something that's both human parsable and machine parsable. So, you know, a computer can read it and a human can read it as well. And it includes basic uh, information that can be, it's flexible enough to be used for pretty much any type of exchange. Um, and so if you go on the website, you can see some of the templates that we've put out, you know, what we suggest folks use for like a fixed price contract or for an auction contract. Mm. But uh, as long as all the parties involved agree, really as long as the buyer and seller agree, I mean, you have to have the notary uh, agree as well. But as long as you have those parties agree, you can create uh, any type of contract uh, that you want. So again, this is one of these things. I don't know what people are, how people are going to be structuring this in the future, um, but the power is in you know is in their hands to do trade as they see fit. All right, great. Well, best of luck to you guys. Um, I'll put links in the description of the YouTube video to the GitHub page and you know your main website and stuff. So um, yeah, best of luck, and you know I really hope that this is successful, and I hope that it you know helps to change the world, and I'll be watching you guys. All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Sam Patterson. Yep. Have a great day. Bye.